uh, this company called PayPal. Uh, and now they yeah. decided to uh, take it to the next level and start your own company. Um, so I guess one thing I'd like to you maybe to introduce yourselves briefly is what do you think were some of the biggest reasons that PayPal was, uh, I guess, so successful given all the uh, forces allied against it? Uh, and in particular, anything that you feel is like a massive uh, success or failure that you were part of that was at PayPal. Uh, I particularly love to hear about anything that was a failure that you're willing to admit on stage. Um, Max, a failure. Max, start us off with a massive fail that you uh, are willing to admit on stage. I'm sure that fraud didn't work so great in August of uh, 2000 or 2000, uh, yeah, it was August of 2000, right? We lost six million or eight million dollars one month to fraud. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, sorry. Uh, well, let's see. The list of failures for PayPal is so long and significant that that's actually I'm struggling to pick a particularly interesting story to tell, as opposed to uh, any other form of struggle. Um, I was once personally responsible for wiping out the only copy of the master secret key that was used to decrypt every credit card we ever had on file. Yeah, 100 million credit cards in a database, and no way to decrypt them. I spent the following six hours figuring out what the hell to do about it, and uh, I'll leave the rest of the story mysterious, but obviously they still have the ability to do that, so we fixed it somehow. But, uh, Wow, wasn't it? Tough morning. I was hearing it was so good. <laughs> and actually, the funniest part of that fail was uh, my then VP of engineering literally going hysterical, getting on top of a table and saying, can we just brute force these things? Which, to the engineers in the audience, is very funny. We had probably the best security, perhaps, ever applied to credit cards in the financial industry. So it was absolutely impossible to brute force anything. Uh, the reason we were successful is because people like that guy and many, many other people that are staying up all night with me actually had both the tenacity to not throw their hands up in the air and go home and figure out solutions to a problem like that or all the other problems we ran into. So it's kind of a trite answer, but the reason any company that can be successful is the quality of the team decides everything. But I, you know that you know a lot of stuff that you guys developed was based on being able to combat fraud and that took a while to get to a point where you actually were to able to deter fraud. How, how long do you feel like that particular problem was something you had to work on and solve while you were at uh, PayPal? Fraud is one of these problems that if you stop working on it, it'll take you down. So I think they're still working on it there. Um, there was a really intense period between, so sometime in May 2000, I think I realized that, it was actually kind of interesting because I think I, I may have been one of the first couple of people that realized how bad things were and couldn't believe it for a while and had to go and learn accounting because I'd never taken, taken a class in accounting up until that point and had somebody explain to me what uh, delinquent loans were, for example. But anyway, um, the next six months were just crazy intense and by oh, December 2000, we knew we were going to die, but uh, maybe May 2001 is when I sort of felt like Iron Big. We could actually make money on this thing sometime. But uh, the, the, the summer of 2000 is this crazy little point where every year the last. Uh, so, Jeremy, you were both in the engineering and product organizations at PayPal. Any uh, particular, and you actually worked for David, I guess, at one point, right? Or not quite. No? Okay, sorry. So, for Max, for Max I'm sorry. Uh, anything that you never admitted to Max that you'd like to come clean on stage <laughs> about now? Um, no, I think Max knows most of my blunders, but uh, I was actually involved in, you know, my, the biggest failure I was involved in at PayPal was a rather big one. We decided, we sort of made the classic, I would call it, engineering blunder of, oh, we're having trouble scaling. The system must be flawed. We need to rewrite it from scratch. And then we compounded that with, and we're going to write it on Windows. Um, <laughs> That wasn't my decision. That was entirely. That's probably not Max. That was for the record. <laughs> so, I had absolutely nothing to do with that decision. It's not true. This was part not of the Elon years. It was, right? a, it was a decision made. People were involved um, at the highest levels. 
And we set out and, and embarked on this rewrite project. And it, it engulfed, it took up probably 80, no, pretty much all of our engineering resources for like eight months, seven, eight months. Uh, there was one guy who was still working on the original PayPal, which was Steve Chen. So he single-handedly built the handful of features that carried us through that year. Uh, but the rest of us were working on this rewrite. Steve Chen, who was here, was also founder of YouTube. YouTube. Um, and so we got all the way through to pretty much the end. We had the thing working. We were doing some load testing. And then there was a little bit of political That's upheaval. Just just political cool. upheaval, which everyone here uh, knows about. There was a change in management. Uh, and then so, so we, we, we can't gloss over that one. Yeah, that's a big part Elon, of that. Elon is not here, but Elon went on vacation as CEO and came back not as CEO. I believe yeah. is the story, correct? Yeah, yeah. entire plotting Something committee. Like yeah, basically the entire plotting committee of that one on stage. I'm, a, I'm innocent. Um, so I had nothing to do with that. But anyway, <laughs> there was a management change, uh, and then sort of sanity rule, then we decided, in fact, switching our then, well, I don't know, several million users, would you say, over to a system that was, you know, just barely tested and just barely working. And I think we had to restart the web servers every three hours to keep them up, um, like just constantly cycling them. We thought it was a bad idea uh, to switch over to that system. And so we killed the project and uh, eight months of work, my work included, went down the train. So I learned a big lesson. Which was, uh, you know, if you have a system that's not scaling, you might be better off fixing the system than starting from scratch. Okay. Uh, never, never do V2s. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. So uh, a lot of people don't know that David was actually also involved in one of the material parts of the company, which was uh, figuring out how PayPal could actually make money. Uh, and a lot of the ways that we moved from being a free service to a paid service were due to David's uh, leadership on the product side. But, uh, David, any failures along that path that you're willing to admit to, or are you still perfect? Well, I guess um, one of the bigger blunders I remember was um, kind of very early on, this before we had kind of taken off on eBay, and we were still kind of focused on the Palm Beaming product. Does everyone kind of know that PayPal originally was started as a mobile application for the Palm Pilot, and uh, the original idea was to kind of beat money from one Palm Pilot to another? Um, so I think we, dollars yes, exactly. I think there were a total of five million Palm users in the world at that point. So that was the um, more than there are now. That was actually the the absolute um, zenith of Palm. Um, and uh, anyway, it's kind of a weird era. Everyone would like you know parties would pull out their Palm and like beam each other business cards and that sort of thing. Um, but in any case, so. Um, at the time, Priceline had hired William Shatter to do, um, you know, this this uh, very extensive advertising campaign. So we decided that we would hire Scotty from Star Trek to, uh, yeah. as in beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, exactly. To kind of do our advertising campaign, and so we kind of um, we actually it only ended up costing us about hundred thousand dollars, which. Um, you know, given the millions that we were power flushing away on, uh, on power flushing everything from fraud to um, sign up for referral bonuses wasn't a huge amount of money, but I do remember we had a, a big press event uh, where, you know, like to unveil Scotty as our spokesman slash mascot, and uh, no one showed up. And uh, I guess there's an interesting sort of ironic postscript to this whole thing, which is that. Um, Scotty died, I guess, a few years ago, and um, as you know, in his will, he wanted his ashes put into space, and so, um, and so, actually, Elon's rocket uh, made they contracted his estate contracted with Elon to launch his ashes into space, and um, no, no, seriously. So, um, but I think I think his ashes were on one of the first couple of rockets that didn't actually make it to space. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, that's, that's very, that's just, yeah, that's really, yeah, that's kind of a sad story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I don't know if we're going to top that one, but, <laughs> um, so, uh, I, you know, I came in a little bit later in PayPal than the rest of you guys, but uh, uh, right before, actually, my first day was supposed to be 9-11, I actually remember calling you, David, that morning and saying, hey, should I come into work? <laughs> um, but, uh, 
I think it's sort of been uh, impressive the number of companies that have come out of, so not to maybe limit the list, but LinkedIn, YouTube, Yelp, Palantir, SpaceX, Tesla, Yammer, Genie, Slide, Kiva, sure I'm missing a few others, maybe Eventbrite if you sort of like get a little lineage there. But like there's a lot of companies that draw lineage, at least in people or investors, uh, from PayPal. We're not even getting into the companies that um, Peter and Reed and Congress and other people have invested in. Um, what do you guys think was the cause of that entrepreneurial culture? Um, you know, obviously, there were a lot of people who were uh, trying to make sure that PayPal did not succeed, including uh, the state governments and card associations and Russian monsters or other monsters. Um, but I think actually uh, Jeremy admitted this to me when we were talking about the room was one of maybe the reasons was the fact that because PayPal raised so much money, uh, even though PayPal was went public for seven hundred and fifty million and was acquired for one point five, not a lot of people made that much money uh, compared to the amount of success because uh, Max, do you own more than two percent of the company when it went public? Roughly speaking? I never such things. <laughs> you should know better than that. So I know for a fact that at least the ousted CEO was the largest shareholder in around 12 or 15 percent. Maybe John can back us up on this. Something like that? That's not true? All right, well, we'll get the real number. Um, so do you guys think that it was because there were so many people beating down and, you know, people got used to really fighting for their survival? Do you think it was like, hey, people were still hungry when they got up? What do you think were some of the factors in making PayPal such an entrepreneurial culture? I actually think that had nothing to do with uh, personal financial outcomes. I actually think, I'm not sure I agree that there wasn't a lot of people who made a lot of money. At one point I calculated the first 15 employees walked out with a million dollars or more or something like that. But it could have been the peak of eBay stock price, which um, the, I, I think the answer to that question is pretty, pretty apparent in the hiring policy of PayPal. Basically, the view has always been the best employee, and this is something that I very much try to uh, see happen at Slide. The very best employee at any job, at, of any level of responsibility, is the person who generally believes that this is their last job working for someone, the next thing they're going to start their own. And those people, a lot of them went on to actually, in fact, start their own companies right after PayPal. But even if they didn't, the attitude of this is my thing, and I'm this close to being an absolute master of what I want to do next, is the exact right attitude at a startup at any level. And so having people like that, as many as possible, is what makes difference in the company, but also that's what makes it, I think, such a fertile ground for entrepreneurs later on. Um, my take is, it actually ties into uh, the Malcolm, uh, for those of you that have read that book, The Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, talks about timing being an important element. And so, and, and also the experience that we went through was really positive. So while the rest of the world was going through this cataclysmic event where the valley got kind of wiped out and confidence was lost in internet companies, we actually had this fun ride where we came out ahead in the end. And so that left us all with, you know, not a ton of money, not Google money, but a little bit of capital in each of our pockets. Um, and, and the timing was phenomenal. Nobody else was really starting businesses from, you know, 2002 to sort of 2004. Just started thinking, I really didn't get going. I'd say Web 2.0 really didn't take off till 2005. And so we all just found ourselves getting the band back together, so to speak, at a very perfect time to start a company, and we were all very optimistic because we didn't really go through that huge failure. Um. So I, definitely timing was a factor, and you know, I also give a lot of credit to Peter Max for the people they recruited. I think um, the way the recruiting worked is that Peter recruited you know, all of his friends from Stanford, and Max recruited all of his friends from Dubai, <laughs> Um, sort of the business and engineering side, respectively. And then they recruited their friends, and so the whole company was kind of virally recruited. And I think it made a, a big difference in terms of you know, the people we got, and in terms of being more entrepreneurial, and, um, and then also sort of the, the cohesion, um, and um, it, you know, just sort of the whole culture was really based on that. So I think that was a big part of it. And then I think maybe the third part of it was just that PayPal was so ahead of the curve doing so many different things that 
proved to be right, but then I think critical for the next generation of startups. So, you know, we were the first company to really see virality as the main way that we should grow as opposed to like doing, you know, like distribution deals. I think we were the first company to kind of bootstrap off an existing platform, which was eBay through a kind of an embed strategy. We had kind of these auction logos, which um, eventually became a widget strategy. Um, you know, have actually paralleled some of that strategy yeah, by exactly. kind of MySpace using exactly. that function. Exactly, that's exactly what happened. Um, and I think we were the first ones, well, I wouldn't say we, we were the first, but we definitely instituted sort of an agile development process uh, before, you know, agile development had even been sort of formalized and, and given a name. But agile in the sense that Max would whip the horses 18 to 24 hours a day, like constantly to like get the most out of them engineering wise, right? Well, I just think, you know, the, the stress was on iterating constantly. It wasn't on doing these really long-term projects. I mean, that was generally seen as a mistake that we should just do very um, short time frame releases. And, um, and we figured out that we should try and create sort of parallel um, teams which could work semi-autonomously and that you have product managers and engineers being able to work together without kind of having, you know, like guardians, you know, sort of like gatekeepers. And, uh, and a lot of that was you and Max, they would work together, right? You were running product right. with Amy and Max was right. running the engineering. Right. You guys were basically doing, I think, three or four week engineering site. Cycle pushes and or two week two um, four week engineering pushes. Sorry, sorry, week long. Yeah, like six, weeks. six weeks maybe at a time, but still at least product cycles in weekly periods and content cycles in you know, less. Than that. Oh, and then you know just one other just thing was um, the way that we hired you. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that was this, probably um, the one fail in your hiring process. <laughs> I should have mentioned sure sure the blunders, but um, <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. But then we. Um, the, we actually hired you to do our first develop, developer uh, platform. And so, you know, PayPal, this was like back in, was it 2000, 2001? 2001 initially, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, that was just like way ahead of the curve now when you kind of look at what companies are doing trying to create platforms. Yeah, after my many failures, some folks have figured out how to do that slightly better, but yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> the one thing I will say is we had our, our API in the back of a t-shirt. So one other piece of simplicity was using HTML to implement the shopping functionality could fit basically in seven to 10 lines of HTML, which we put on the back of our t-shirts for the conference. Um, so, okay, enough with the uh, patting ourselves on the back here for a second. Um, what do you guys think could have been different or better at PayPal? What things didn't really uh, work out so successfully, maybe in hindsight? I think it's kind of a waste of time to uh, go through the uh, Coulda, woulda, shoulda. I'm not sure the, uh, not sure there's any value in that, to be honest. Um, I think. Uh, so, do you guys think it was a good idea or not a good idea for PayPal to divest itself of the adult uh, and gambling businesses? So those were those were two drivers of some amount of revenue and profit for PayPal that basically we gave up as a result of the eBay acquisition. Um, I think that has everything to do with eBay's. <coughs> Perhaps even management team, specifically without naming any names, political ambition and desire. <laughs> wow. No, no, it, it, okay. I, I wasn't expecting that one. But. Uh, no, I, actually, I, I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know if Meg plans to run for uh, governess. Leonard, I think Leonard was in one of Meg's television commercials. I think uh, any cor uh, correlation. She was in one of my commercials. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Got it. You were the it man. Uh, yeah, so I, I actually, I, I didn't, I didn't, although it came out funny that it meant to me, I didn't meet Meg's governor campaign. What I actually meant is that eBay had a, even at the time, just like we did for that matter, an enormous presence in Washington. They had a lot of people to meet, they used to kiss, and uh, the idea of eBay all well, but endorsing adult or gambling lifestyles was just not palatable, and so that was a, it was a, it was not a business decision. On the morality front, I think everybody needs to make a decision for themselves. But as far as business goes, it was singly, singularly the most profitable category in both cases. So financially, it was obviously a terrible idea. But uh, the gambling side of it became very rapidly legal, so there's absolutely no choice. The adult side was something that you decided from a political perspective. I know Peter had a very libertarian sort of background that he encouraged with a lot of the folks who came either left side or the right side of the politics. Everybody seemed to have a very progressive, you know, making money was okay sort of attitude. Um, which I think, you know, voted well for the company. Um, 
I don't think that our policy was that we'll do anything that makes money. The policy was just that, you know, we weren't going to try and investigate, you know, how people were using products to send money to each other. We weren't going to be like a regulatory body. Right. And so we kind of had, it wasn't that we were like for these uses of PayPal. It was just that we were neutral. Not against them. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't trying to make any critiques. Right. And I actually thought that was a good as well. And, and was, there was I mean, also the uh, Elliot Spitzer factor. Yeah, that's, I was going to bring that up, which is I think that, you know, part of the decision to sell was knowledge that Elliot Spitzer was interested coming after the company and then, you know, well, I don't think, I mean, that wasn't a reason why we sold, but, um, but there is a, something very interesting did happen, which is um, Spitzer sent us, see this is when he was Attorney General of New York, and um, he sent us a letter that he was going to investigate the company for facilitating gambling transactions. That literally came to us, I think, the Monday after we had closed the eBay deal, and so, um, you know, but I think that as part of the deal, eBay had already announced they were going to shut that down. So um, I think it would have clearly become a problem for us had we remained a standalone company. But I don't think that was the that wasn't like a motivator to, to sell anything. Yeah. So um, let's maybe take a step forward into the current day and talk about what uh, companies you guys are running currently.